right now it would be hard to imagine an intersection in Saigon that better captures the incredible change underway in the city. You've got the city's fanciest new shopping mall, Takashimaya, right here. Behind me you've got uh, some of the final remnants of colonial architecture uh, in the centre of town. There are still some other major old buildings, but uh, another serious piece of colonial heritage has been demolished along this block. Uh, the old tax centre and this building will come down soon as well. And you've also got transport dysfunction. The city is smothering, suffocating in its own fumes and it's in its own uh, traffic congestion. And uh, you get some sense of that here. But you also see behind me here the, um, the Japanese funded metro that's being built at the moment as well. So uh, who knows, there might be some relief uh, the traffic once that metro is up and running. But in the meantime, traffic chaos is very much the norm in Saigon. And if you happen to be staying away from the centre of town, expect very long waits to get anywhere. But this uh, old building was actually a very handsome piece of, uh, piece of architecture. And so many of us are kind of sad to see it uh, breathing its last. It's kind of typical of this city that uh, on the other side of this building is a demolition we were just looking at. Right here you've got these kitchen cases that apparently date back to the 1920s. Across the road there you've got Saigon Centre and Takashimaya, the city, perhaps the country's fanciest shopping mall. And here you've got this little piece of old Saigon which is fast fading but the land that I'm standing on now has a story of all of its own. You see right behind that demolition site is this old furniture store which has been here for a very long time. Anh ơi, ở đây anh bán đồ ở đây cách đây bao nhiêu lâu rồi ạ? 20 năm rồi. 20 năm rồi đúng không? Lâu lắm rồi. It's still a pretty cool place to pick up uh, old furniture and by all accounts this place is not uh, is not going to be impacted by all the development going on around us because this land is owned by the old Hindu temple. Um, which is right the other side of this building. And the Hindu, te this, this part of Saigon before 1975, there was a big Indian population in the city and the street where the temple is was the centre of, or one of the centres at least, uh, of, uh, of Indian money lending uh, in Saigon. And uh, so this piece of land, everyone says, I'm not sure if this is true, it's actually owned by the Indian government. And if so, it's this... Uh, remarkably protected little patch of prized real estate amongst some of their city's most uh, ambitious developments. These guys worked out that uh, shutters are all the rage. So while on the one hand uh, old buildings are being demolished at, at great speed here, every Vietnamese cafe and restaurant wants to have a piece of, of the heritage of the city in, in the form of these old shutters. That's the city's tallest building, Batexco, in the, uh, in the background there. And right here behind me has long been one of the city's most photogenic doorways. The furniture shop's about to shut down for the day. I'm not sure whether there's going to be any light in here right now. No, there's not. The lights are all off. But uh, if you're coming to Saigon and you're interested in old furniture, I can recommend this place for a wander, even if you're not buying, just, uh, just for a look. It's an amazing little space. And it's right opposite Takashimaya. And there's a lesson there for travellers too. Have a little look behind some of the uh, shiny new buildings of Saigon and you'll, uh, you'll probably still be able to uncover some very special old bits and pieces of, uh, of the city's past.